everyone, and welcome back to Classic Comics. The third season of Star Trek Picard is approaching, and it seems to be causing some contention among Star Trek fans. Most of the previous seasons of Modern Trek have been largely panned by longtime fans for various reasons. The bad writing, departures from established canon, the fan baiting and mockery. I could go on and on about the problems that shows like Star Trek Picard and Star Trek Discovery have had and plenty of YouTubers have made videos where they decry these shortcomings in varying degrees. One of the YouTubers that has criticized modern Trek and Hollywood in general is Robert Meyer Burnett. Burnett, or RMB as he's also known, has made several pointed criticisms of Star Trek Discovery, Star Trek Picard, and other modern Hollywood shows and films, lamenting the poor quality of the writing, the lack of sincerity upon the part of the people who are making these properties, and the general lack of inspiration in Hollywood. Recently, Paramount has sent some advanced copies of the first six episodes of Star Trek Picard Season 3 to various YouTubers and critics ahead of the show's release. After seeing them, R&B has declared that this season of Star Trek Picard is excellent. He insists that this is the kind of show that Star Trek fans have been waiting for, all the characters are behaving appropriately, the story is good, and the show is a great send-off for the TNG crew. And he isn't the only one. Dave Cullen, another YouTuber who reviews sci-fi shows, has also said that the first six episodes are promising, saying that Star Trek fans are finally getting an excellent show in this current iteration of Star Trek. Now, I respect the opinions of both R&B and Dave Cullen, and if they both say that the new season of Picard is great, then I'm willing to believe that they might be right. Speaking only for myself here, it simply doesn't matter to me if Star Trek Picard Season 3 is good or not. There have been too many insults, too much gaslighting, too many promises that they would course correct, too many disappointments. If Star Trek fans want to crawl back, then that's their business. But this show is still being produced by Secret Hideout, Alex Kurtzman's production company, and therefore he's making money off this show. Secret Hideout and Kurtzman are responsible for the crap we've been getting over the last several years, and I refuse to reward them. I think R&B is sincere in his claim that the show is good, I just don't care anymore, and I reject the notion that I should just pretend that all the BS over the last six years hasn't happened, and that I, as a lifelong Star Trek fan since the age of six, have an obligation to show up and support the show because it's now quote-unquote good. One thing that needs to be pointed out here is that the people who have controlled Star Trek over the last several years are objectively pretty lousy people. Their treatment of their own fan base speaks for itself. Shutting down fan films, websites, and other projects with threats of legal action when such things have been a part of Star Trek fandom since the 70s, media hit pieces directed at the fan base to depict them as hateful bigots because they have critical thinking skills and they saw how bad the writing was and spoke up, and their mockery of said fans on the show. On top of all that, there have been too many Star Trek cast members popping off on Twitter and saying things that are varying degrees of silly, ignorant, and insulting. With Marina Sirtis taking the prize a couple of years ago when Texas was hit with a deep freeze that caused power outages, and she posted a tweet saying, in effect, You Texans all vote Republican, so I guess you deserve it, unquote. Thanks a lot, Marina. So am I supposed to just pretend that these things didn't happen? I mean, I guess I could but why should I? I think part of the reason we've had to endure some of the things we've been put through from Hollywood over the last several years is because fans have been too forgiving, too willing to excuse these Hollywood jerks when they cast insults at the very people who make their jobs possible. They wouldn't be working on Star Trek today if it weren't for the generations of fans who have supported it over the last 50 years. But the custodians of modern Trek have gone out of their way to make it clear they think the fan base is problematic and needs to be replaced with a new audience, preferably one that is less male and less white. I would simply argue that we should give these Hollywood elites exactly what they claim they want and turn away from Star Trek, at least until a new production company is given control of the franchise and then we can see what they do with it. I think part of the reason R&B is taking his current stance in regards to Picard Season 3 is because he has a significantly different perspective than most fans do. R&B is a part of Hollywood. He is a part of the system. To borrow the left's language of guilt by association, R&B is Hollywood adjacent. 
people like you and me, who are just common peons, we aren't a part of Hollywood, even though they like to pretend that we're welcome because it helps them sell their content. But they don't want common folk like us around, especially if they come from the middle of the country. But R&B has worked in Hollywood. He may be on the periphery, but he can get past the velvet rope, and he can get in the door. Because of this, I think he's inclined to give these people a pass for a lot of things. Although I think it's also fair to point out that, due to his associations with Star Trek in the past, his previous criticisms are even more noteworthy. R&B has made much of this season's showrunner being this guy named Terry Metalis, arguing that Metalis just wants to make a good Star Trek show and that he has given fans what they asked for. Again, I would simply say, what of it? Maybe Metalis has made a good show, just as R&B says, but whether the show is good or not, I'm not obligated to support it. I would compare it to comic shop owners. I have nothing against the owners of my local comic shop, but that doesn't obligate me to buy comics, even if they are good. It's unfortunate that they get caught in the middle, and if Terry Metalis has delivered what R&B says he has, then it's unfortunate. But it's too little too late for me. Star Trek has lost me. At least until wholesale changes take place and Secret Hideout gets shown the door. Apparently, Secret Hideout's contract with Paramount is expiring later this year, and watching the show risks giving Secret Hideout a win that they could then use to get their contract renewed, leaving us stuck with them for several more years. Star Trek fans have been complaining since Star Trek Discovery first aired in 2017, and now in the 11th hour, when they may be about to lose their license, Secret Hideout suddenly wants to make a good show to lure us back so that they can point to the show's success to help their argument for why they should have their contract renewed. And if it does get renewed, they'll quickly go right back to giving us the same crap they've been giving us over the last several years. So if you want to support the show, hey, go ahead. But don't be surprised when Secret Hideout gets a new contract and in a couple of years we get Strange New World Season 2 and it's a mess just like previous seasons of Star Trek have been. Don't be surprised if they do some show about Kirk's early years in Starfleet and they make him pansexual. Or... They give him a mentor who's a black trans female lesbian in a wheelchair with a glass eye who taught Kirk everything he knows about being a captain because, because she's a better captain than Kirk ever was. Deal with it, you incels! In any case, you can probably guess which side of this argument I fall down on. Let me know in the comments, what is your stance on Picard Season 3? Do you agree with me or disagree? Also, please share this video and please sub to the channel and hit the bell for notifications. And I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching.